What is an obesogen and why, why are you researching that and why is that so important? So an obesogen is a compound that generates weight beyond its calories. That's an obesogen. So there are plenty of things in our food that are calories, but they will generate a certain amount of weight based on those calories. If they generate more than that, so there's some obesity. emergent property that so, has happened within the body. Like if you consume 500 calories of obesogen and you put on 700 calories worth of weight, something happened to make that happen. Exactly. Exactly right. So and, the reason is happened? because of mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay. Because your mitochondria are not working well. There was a paper that came out uh, oh, about 10, five, 10 years ago now, I think, that tracked body temperature from the Civil War to today. And all of us, everyone at every age throughout the entire United States is burning, it has a body temperature that is 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit lower than we used to. Now that cannot be explained by any change in our environment or air conditioning or physical activity or anything else. Why are all of us burning less energy to create less heat to have a lower body temperature? It's because we have mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay. So again, I don't want to make this podcast about me. We're going to take this offline, but I've come to know over the last decade that my normal temperature is 96.7 like a two degrees lower than 98.6. So what, if I have 98.6, I have a fever. And I've never understood why that was. This is why. Holy crap. Okay, so um, are there tests that are, well, okay, so there are various diets out there. One of them is called Whole30, which the premise of that is don't eat any processed foods at all. You can eat carbs, you can eat potatoes, you can eat Lara bars, just no processed <laughs> <Lara> stuff. <laughs> well, Lara bars are processed. <laughs> they are, but there's no other not. ingredients in there. Not. There's just like dates and peanuts or something. Yeah, no, I know. But they're okay. still processed. Um, right. You can't. They, I mean, they had to macerate it to get it into the Lara bar. So it's not 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 none. Uh, the, okay. The point so is, so there the point is a is, definitional thing between processed. I, when I think of process, I mean oh, that yeah. there's chemicals added in things. You actually mean that it was well, formed into a product. It's not a a whole yeah. food per se. Exactly right. Um, so there is a classification system that was developed by my colleague, Dr. Carlos Montero, who is a professor of public health at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it is called the NOVA system, N-O-V-A. doesn't stand for anything, just the new system. Uh, and uh, the easiest way to uh, explain it would be with an example. So uh, there are four classes in NOVA. Cl uh, let's take an apple. So Nova class one would be an apple picked off a tree. Class two would be apple slices, de-stemmed, de-seeded, maybe de-skinned. Class three would be apple sauce, like cooked, macerated, possibly sugar added, and maybe some preservative. Class four would be a McDonald's apple pie. Mm. Okay. Turns out, when you look at the consumption across the world of various foods, only that class four category contributes to metabolic disease, but that's really? where the action is. And that happens to be 63% of all the foods sold in America and 67% of the sugar that we consume. What? 63% of the food sold is in that class four category. How does that, what, what is that Correct. like globally in, in other countries? Less? So it's about 50, it's about 56% in the UK. It's about 60% in France, 63% here. What about in Africa? I don't know. I don't know about Africa. That's a good question. Probably less. Yeah, probably less. They don't have less. enough money you know, to, to, and, and importing issues and stuff. So, so I, I don't for, know about Africa in for, the Middle so East, in the Middle East, it's about 90%. 90% is that category four. Yeah. 
And that's why they have 18% diabetes and 80% obesity. In the Middle East? In the Middle East? I didn't know that. Kuwait, in uh, Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, yeah. Well, there's some irony there with the carbon pulse as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So um, people that do diets that are um, highly in the category one and category two or a whole foods sort of diet. I did a whole foods diet for a month. It was really hard for me, but I lost 25 pounds and then I gained it back, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know that's, why it's that, hard for you, because the things that you eat don't taste as good as the things that you gave up. Well, Except indeed, for hash because browns. they were implied with every extra morning. sugar. <laughs> okay. Well, they were implied with extra sugar. So yeah. our taste buds have been desensitized. And there's a, a, a neurophysiologist, scientist, neuroscientist at uh, University of Michigan, Monica Deuce, very, very smart lady who... Uh, has basically demonstrated the molecular mechanisms of tongue desensitization. She sh showed it in fruit flies. Point is, you can actually get that back, but you have to reduce the substrate. So our food has been so sweetened on purpose that we have desensitized our taste buds. And so food that is whole, as it were, natural, that came out of the ground, doesn't taste very good anymore because we have desensitized those taste buds to not be able to appreciate it. If you go off sugar for three weeks, a blueberry will taste like a bomb in your mouth. I mean, it will just explode in, with, with flavor. So sugar is a supernormal stimuli to our evolved mm -hmm. brains, the same way that pornography or gambling or, or you know, video games are. There, there are chemical addictions, there are behavioral addictions. You know, there, we have both. So anything that stimulates the nucleus accumbens, anything that stimulates the reward center in the extreme is addictive. So we have chemical, it's like heroin, cocaine, nicotine, alcohol, sugar. We also have behaviors. We have shopping, gambling, internet gaming, social media, pornography. All of these stimulate the same reward center in the brain. Every one of those has an aholic neck you know, after it. Shopaholic, chocoholic, sexaholic, alcoholic, you pick it. The point is we have a reward system and it is under fire every day by not just the food industry, but by virtually any, any uh, 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 corporate entity because that's how they get you to buy.